con noi David Bollier. David Bollier è un, un, un grande personaggio uh, dei commons, dei beni comuni in America, non è solo un teorico, è anche un attivista, uh, è anche impegnato uh, sul fronte di diversi progetti culturali e, e, e pratici e, 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 e anche diciamo, politici in senso largo, non, non di partito ma in senso largo. E, eh, Bollier è un collaboratore eh, di, eh, di due autorità nel campo dei beni comuni che io cito sempre nel mio libro, che sono la Elino Rostrom e che eh, è, eh, ed è un'altra un persona che si chiama eh, Peter Barnes, no? che eh, propone le fondazioni come enti, economiche, eh, enti economici di gestione dei beni comuni. David Bollier, per esempio, in Italia, ha scritto eh, insieme a, a Elino Nostrom eh, eh, lo sviluppo del paradigma dei beni comuni, eh, la conoscenza come bene comune dalla teoria alla pratica della, della, della Bruno Mondadori, quindi è un grande esperto. Sono David Bollier, e grazie per permettermi di essere con voi oggi. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am an activist, an author, uh, a blogger at bollier.org, and the co-founder of the Commons Strategies Group, which is an international group that helps advance the Commons paradigm in various contexts. Um, I'm pleased to be with you today to talk about uh, Enrico Grazzini's new book, The Good of Everyone, because I think it addresses a very important issue of the Commons and how it can help uh, help us solve our many problems. Unfortunately, politicians and economists are focused mostly on the state and the market and what needs to be done to change them. And of course, there is a lot of change that needs to occur there. But part of the uh, transformation that we need to make will only come by addressing the commons as a vital source of energy and imagination and social equity. Uh, the commons consists, broadly speaking, of all the things that we collectively own and that we have a legal or moral obligation to pass on undiminished to the next generation. The commons is a, a governance paradigm, a system of management of resources that is too often ignored by economists as uh, an, a relic of the past, something that has no contemporary uh, applications. And this is just flat out wrong. Uh, that there is a rich, diverse body of commons out there that can serve all sorts of purposes from natural resource commons like water, forests, and fisheries to digital commons on the internet like Wikipedia, free and open source software, social networking, and so on. Unfortunately, the great value of the commons has been eclipsed for at least a generation or two because of the 1968 essay by Garrett Hardin a biologist who talked about the tragedy of the commons. And since then, uh, economists and other uh, respectable people have considered it impossible for the commons to be valuable. It, it, uh, the tragedy results meaning overuse, overconsumption of shared resources, and therefore the only alternatives are private property or government. Well, this is proven to be wrong. Uh, Professor Eleanor Ostrom of Indiana University, who won the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2009 for her pioneering work on the commons, has shown uh, through great empirical research and theorizing that the commons is a, an entirely effective, viable way to manage shared resources. Uh, she has, uh, in fact, there is now a whole uh, academic discipline devoted to common studies, which combines economics, anthropology, sociology, political science, and many other fields. Um, the importance of this book is that it brings a new spotlight on this, especially in Italy, and that's all for the good, because we need to start uh, understanding the things, the, value, the, the things that the commons can contribute to us. Uh, one, it uh, provides an effective way to uh, prevent the overconsumption of commons. Commons are not open access uh, regimes with no rules. There, there are, there's a defined community. There's boundaries around the commons. There's rules for how it's governed. There's uh, monitoring of people trying to free ride or vandalize the commons. So it's, it's a managed regime. 
But what's great about it is it helps us live within our means, live within the planet's means by setting limits to consumption and uh, working with nature rather than simply exploiting it. Uh, so as a result, there's also a great deal of social equity concerned with the management of the commons because people want to make sure that there's roughly enough for all and not simply uh, the, enough for those who have the resources to exploit it better, namely large corporations or governments. So the commons can help assure social fairness, it can uh, help assure ecological stewardship, and it can help re, uh, regenerate the social fabric by strengthening our relationships with each other. Uh, so it deals with a lot of interconnected problems such as overconsumption and debt the inequalities of wealth, environmental destruction, social alienation, and the corruption and limited competence of large centralized institutions, most notably government and business itself. Now, I don't want to promote the commons as a magic bullet, uh, a magic solution, because running a successful commons has all sorts of challenges in its own right. But I do want to say that the commons has many structural advantages over government and business uh, as ways to sustainably manage resources. Because a commons requires participation and transparency. It's more locally and regionally based and therefore more likely to be responsive. It's not addicted to consumption and relentless growth. It's committed to satisfying real needs and not manufactured, marketed needs, quote needs, more wants. So for a lot of reasons, the commons holds some long-term solutions for a lot of our uh, deep-rooted structural problems. And part of the problem is to make this message heard in mainstream circles, because the political mainstream generally regards the commons as uh, a fringe idea of no value. And my response is, educate yourself. Learn what's going on internationally uh, in the burgeoning commons movement and see the dozens, the scores, the hundreds of different imaginative commons that are actually working on the ground as uh, functioning examples. The internet is probably the most familiar. It's a massive hosting infrastructure for commonses around the world and has spawned all sorts of self-organized communities managing knowledge, creativity, culture, data, much, and much else. So we need to see that the sharing economy is in fact ubiquitous. It's already here, it's already robust, but it's not culturally recognized. And it's not just digital commons, there's all sorts of natural resource commons, particularly in the global south, where communities are, or are managing fisheries, forests, irrigation water, um, uh, farm, farmable land, uh, arable farming, farming land to uh, serve the needs of a community rather than uh, companies who might be uh, internationally based who are simply uh, exercising a new form of neo-colonialism on the global south. We see this with the international land grab currently going on. So I am thrilled that uh, Enrico Grazzini's new book, The Good of Everyone, is helping to bring a spotlight to how the commons can be a uh, positive force in addressing many of these problems of enclosure. Uh, I think it's important to have a mental idea of the breadth of this. I've mentioned some of the digital commons, but we need to see how far this is reaching. Uh, I mean, I find it fascinating that beyond photo sharing or video sharing or collaborative data networks, you have drug companies who are doing distributed research through the internet, through kinds of types of commons. You have crowdsourcing as a new form of financing for creative cultural endeavors. You have open, source, open access publishing bypassing commercial publishers so that scholarship and science can be available for free to anyone in perpetuity without copyright uh, limiting, uh, limiting access to important research. The city of Linz, Austria has recently declared its ambition to create an open regional information commons, both for good government purposes, but also 
for economic development in its region. There are all sorts of, uh, of natural resource commons that uh, are also expanding. Seed sharing in India has shown how women can emancipate themselves from uh, being, being bonded laborers and grow enough food for themselves to have two meals a day instead of one. Uh, forests in Nepal have been recovered. Uh, once dry riverbeds in India have been recovered once they're treated as commons and mobilize the energies of the people of the community. There are now more than 4,000 alternative currencies around the world that are functioning, producing a counter-cyclical effect on volatile international currency markets. I could go on and on. My only point is to show that there's immense practical value of the commons as a way to meet our needs and to, uh, to, to, to meet our needs in more ecologically benign, uh, socially satisfying ways. So I wish to salute Enrico Grazzini uh, for his new book and uh, I wish him the best and all of you in trying to find how the commons can serve Italy's needs better in the future, because I think there is a very bright promise there, but as I say, it requires more education, more experimentation, more on-the-ground innovation. Uh, this book is a great way to get that conversation going, and I wish it the best. So thank you for, uh, for letting me share this with you today.